Hi everyone. Let's have a look at another Lagrange multipliers problem. So we want to find the first octant point on this surface that's closest to the origin. I'm just playing around with it a little bit. We're sort of looking for the point, you know, maybe somewhere around here, that's closest to the origin. What is that point? That's what we're interested in. So how do we set this up as an optimization problem? Well, we need to find something we're trying to either maximize or minimize. And here we want to find some, a point that's closest to the origin. So that tells us we want to minimize the distance function. So for a point x, y, z, we want to minimize the distance that point is to the origin. But minimizing the distance that the point is from the origin would be the same as minimizing the square of its distance. So we like to work with the square of the distance function. So that is, we are going to minimize x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's the function we're going to minimize. And this is the square of the distance. What's our constraint? Well, where do these points, x, y, z, have to live? Well, they've got to live on this surface. The points that we're interested in are the ones that live on this surface that are closest to the origin. And so our constraint is the equation of the surface. And so that's going to be our function, g of x, y, z. So by the method of Lagrange multipliers, we need to solve these equations. f sub x equals to lambda g sub x f sub y is equal to lambda g sub y, f sub z is equal to lambda g sub z, and then we got our constraint equation, x squared, y squared, z equal to 4. So our derivatives are going to be 2x, that's equal to lambda g sub x, g sub x is 2xy squared z, so that would be 2 lambda x, y squared, z. f sub y, that's 2y. That's equal to lambda g sub y, so that's 2 lambda x squared, y, z. f sub z is 2z is equal to lambda times g sub z, so that's lambda x squared, y squared. Now these are our four equations we're going to want to solve for. Again, there's no standard method for doing this. You just do what you can, exploit patterns as much as possible. And so can we see a pattern that's happening here? Well, first of all, I noticed that I would really like to cancel the x from the left and the right-hand side of the first equation. Can I do that? Well, either x equals 0 is a solution of this equation, or if it's not 0, I can divide both sides by x and get rid of it. I could also factor out the 2 as well, or cancel out the 2. So I can get 1 is equal to lambda y squared z. Can x equals 0 be a solution? No, because the constraint says that x squared y squared times z all has to be 4. And so none of them can be 0. So that can't be a possibility. It would violate the constraint. So that first equation reduces down to 1 equals lambda y squared z. The second equation, by the same reasoning, would become 1 is equal to lambda x squared z. So those first two equations simplify down a little bit more nicely. Now what can I do with this? Well, what I could do is I could take this first equation and this second equation and I could divide one by the other. So let's say we're going to take the first equation and divide it by the second equation. So I'm going to take the left-hand side of the first, divide it by the left-hand side of the second. That's 1 divided by 1, which is 1. I'm going to take the right-hand side of the first, divide it by the right-hand side of the second. That gives me a y squared over x squared. And so that tells me then that x squared is equal to y squared. So I've got two numbers who have the same square. So that means 
x has to be plus or minus y, but they both have to live in the first octant. That was one of the conditions right at the start. Find the first octant point. So because we are looking for points in the first octant, this tells us that x has to be equal to y. And this was because since x and y have to be bigger than 0. Okay, so we've got that x has to be equal to y. Now what can we do? Well, now what we can do is try to figure out, we'll bring z into the mix. Right now we know how x and y are related. So we're going to bring z into the mix. What I can do is I can take this equation, 1 equals lambda x squared z, and I will write it as lambda x squared is 1 over z because that allows me to replace this lambda x squared with a 1 over z. So that means this becomes a 2, and I can bring the z over, as a z squared is equal to y squared. Or in other words, y is equal to root 2z. And that, again, because when we're taking square roots, we just have to worry about the positive values. So now I have y is equal to root 2z. And so that means that I can rewrite everything in terms of z. I can write, you know, maybe I'll even do one more thing here. Since x is equal to y and y is equal to root 2z, x is also equal to root 2z. And so that tells me I can take this equation, plug it in for x. I can take this expression, plug it in for y. And what we get is, maybe I'll, rather than cram it into that top corner, we'll write it out here. So then we get that x, which is root 2z, all squared, times y squared y is root 2z, all squared, that's y squared, times z is equal to 4. So this gives us 4z to the fifth is equal to 4, or z to the fifth is equal to 1, which means z is equal to 1. And so now we've got what z is equal to, and we know what y and x are in terms of that. So therefore, x, y, z, is equal to root 2, root 2, and 1. So we found the one candidate for being the point that's closest to the origin. And if we think about the problem, there has to be a point that's closest to the origin. There's I mean, points we can get as far as we want away from the origin. We can go as far as we want just by picking points with large x and y values, for instance. It could have small z values, but large x and y values, we can get as far away from the origin as we want. But there's going to be one point that's closest, and we only found one candidate for it. So that's got to be it. So this is the point. This is the point closest to the origin. That is on. The surface. Alright, that's it for this example. Thanks for watching.